everyone welcome to Kelly's creative dream studios and it is make it mail it Monday if you have been to my studio before thanks for dropping back by I try to be as consistent as I can um, at least till I get the studio stuff in order if you're new to my channel I hope you'll take a minute to click the subscribe button because coming up on Thursday you're going to find out why that subscribe button is really super important as I celebrate my 500 subscribers and then some so today, for Make It Mail It Monday, I happen to think these big journals are going to be ready to go in the mail this coming weekend. And I wanted to have a card to put with each one of the two journals. So, the B card was born. I have picked up, I started with this sketch. Now note they have a darker brown background. And I didn't think about it until after I put these floral buttons in that I probably should have gone with a darker background too. But I really like the wood planking and I like the motion of the diagonal uh, graphic in that pa background paper. Now this is the reverse side of the really pretty, you've got one here all cut out, duh, of this really pretty bee journal, bee paper. And let me tell you, it was really hard to cut into this and only knowing that I have four sheets left to play with was the only reason I was able to do that. I tried the other papers that had the wood grains on them, but they were too wide and they just didn't look right. So because I had scraps to work with, I had scraps of the uh, bumblebee yellow, I had scraps of other pieces of that designer series paper pack that I decided this is where I was gonna go. I spotted this and I thought, perfect for using up some of the scraps. So um, I will have the measurement, exact measurements um, in the blog post today, um, link for that blog post will be in the description box below. But one of the things that tripped me up was I was having trouble finding a sentiment that would work perfect in this size of a banner strip. It couldn't be very big. So I'm going to set that there a minute set these two pieces together because I'm actually doing this in a time warp where we can put one of these cards together. But I wanted to show you the new August paper pumpkin that I just got in the mail yesterday is all about sunflowers. And look at this pretty honeycomb. Let me take it out of the package so we don't get the glare. Because with my side lamps, it's kind of hard to not have a glare. But look at this. Isn't that pretty? You know, just when I think I'm done adding stuff to these bee journals, something really cool comes along. So I have these to play with. They're, and this uses um, crushed curry and soft suede. But I want to get down in here a minute really quick. <laughs> get my inks out of the way. It's laid out to make cards and the water coloring on these cards is just beautiful and I have yellow paper to wrap the cards in so I have this and now I have these now I won't use the card backgrounds probably <coughs> um, but the gold foil honeycomb sheets were uh, a free gift in this paper pumpkin. They were an added bonus along with this stamp set that says thank you, wishing you so much happiness for a one of a kind friend, the hello that I used, a bee, couple of bees, a side view or uh, profile and wing spread, and then the sunflower with the center and a couple of uh, leaf and brushy kind of things. So this came with the set. And I will play with that later, but I just, I saw the honeycombs and I went, yes, something new to put in the journal. So I'm still working on it. Okay, so where did we go from here? I started with this. Of course, I have a four and a quarter by five and a half base card. The panel is cut to four inches by five and a quarter. And then I used my circle dies, um, layering circles from Stampin' Up. They have the solid circles and then they have the scallops. And I used the second, um, or the smallest circle 
for this. And I cut out, put that in there so I don't lose it. I cut out two from a floral and two from a green. Now, as I said, as I was putting this together, I noticed I probably should have done something different here. And we're going to, so hang with me. We will take care of that on the other card. And I still may be able to go back, and I'm not going to be able to go back and fix those. So, let's start with our four and a quarter by five and a half card base. Scored at, um, at the four and a quarter mark. And it didn't score really straight for some reason. Might have been my vision. I didn't have my cheaters on. I still don't. But we have that. And then we're going to use our Tombow Mono Green Glue. We call it green because of the green caps and the green lettering. And we're just going to run a bead around this. Now remember, when you're using this glue, <coughs> and I share this tip over and over, don't go all the way to the edge because it will squish. And it really doesn't come off very good if you squish outside the line. So stay about an eighth to a quarter of an inch inside. And then when you lay it down and spread it out, it'll spread to your edges and you'll be just fine. Okay, now the next thing I did was figure out how I wanted to position my circles. I know I'm casting a shadow and I am so sorry. Um, I don't have my ring light up because my drop cord isn't attached. But I kind of laid these out where they needed to go. And we wanted to run these kind of at an angle. And when I saw where everything needed to position, and I see that I want to come down a little farther into this corner, my tremors tonight are really giving me fits. But you've got them to where they're kind of cocked at an angle and across from one another. There we go. Okay, so that's where I want that to go. So I'm going to take my green glue, and I'm going to pick up the two circles together Stick this underneath to get that down so that those two will stay how I have them positioned. And then I'm just going to lay them down here on the card. I'm going to do the same thing this way. Pick it up, go up underneath the edge, and just run a line just like that. Okay. And I did get some glue on that one, but remember this glue dries clear. So it's okay. And then that one's going to go right there on top. So we'll put a little bit of glue around this one. And just drop it into place. Okay. Now this one we're going to do a little bit different. To get a banner that I was happy with. You'll notice we have some trimmed edges here. I went with this die. From the messages dies and I this is retired it may still be in um, the clearance aisle at Stampin' Up I will check and if so I will link it down below because as you can see it you have a lot to work with but I took this one but this was gonna be too long okay so what I did was I cut it down to two and a half inches and I'm just measuring this on my board down here because I didn't bring my paper cutter. Okay. And then, well, I didn't cut that very straight either, did I? Let's do that. Then I come back and I laid this up here on the mat. And used that as the template for cutting my corners off. So the piece that I cut off, I just laid it back up there and scooched it down. And now I have my, my base, okay? Then I cut one of these. This is two and a quarter inches by three quarter of an inch. And I did the same thing. I just kind of laid this down here and kind of centered that so I could clip the edges just like that. Now, did I have to clip the edges? No. I didn't have to clip the corners. I could have left them flat. But I like the shadowing effect of having those edges trimmed, just like that. Okay? So now this will set inside of here. But wait, there's more. First off, we need to stamp our sentiment. And I took the hello from that August paper pumpkin. Because I wanted something really simple for the front. And you'll notice I didn't stamp it in the center. 
I stamped it to the right so I could make room for that B. And we're just going to lay that down there, just like that. And then I'm going to lay this down here. If I can get glue to come out. There we go. And I'm going to lay this on here and kind of center it, just like that. My trimmers don't always allow me to lay things in evenly, but I try, okay? And now that we've got that down, now I'm going to come in about, oh, about a half an inch. Kind of split this empty space in the middle. And I'm going to poke a hole with my pokey tool. And I love the ones from, from Dollar Tree. Absolutely love them. And I have these B brads from the eyelet outlet. And we're going to stick one of those right in that hole. Get him going the right direction. Pull our prongs down. And then I laid him down and really pressed those prongs flat. Then I came back in with three uh, Many dimensionals. Now, I like to always make sure that I put one in the center because if you don't, you get this springy motion in the center. We don't want a trampoline. We don't need a trampoline on our card. So I take that and make sure that I have one in the center as well as on both ends. And then we plop it right there. And there's our two cards. One for an ace and one for Greg for their, to go with their uh, journals. Now, I have a couple other things I wanted to show you really quick. Number one, um, you know that I've been playing in the, uh, with the Lindy's Magicals from, that I purchased from Maddie. And one of the things we did was, we turned them into like a thin watercolor and we wrote with them with a calligraphy pen. So I picked up these jars, these bottles. I just had a card here. There it is. There are <clears throat> a 16th liquid ounce. They're bottled from a Crafter Squirt Dollar Tree. $1.25 for five bottles. And I can fit six of them perfectly in here. Just like that. Whoops. <laughs> And so I can store these together in boxes in the shoe box with the Magicals. Just like this and keep everything together. Now I've got a couple of single Magicals here. I have uh, Anti Gold and I have Afternoon Delight Denim as well as my Jingle Bells. My husband had an entire calligraphy set from when he was in art school, in, in high school, in art class. And I took the finest tip one with the shortest handle that would fit in here. And I've added it as a permanent establishment in my Lindy's box. And I have three more of these individual colors coming. I ordered them from Maddie on Saturday. So there were those. That was one thing I wanted to show you. There was something else. I think it was the, the August box, actually. I think it was the Paper Pumpkin box. And if you have never played with Paper Pumpkin, Paper Pumpkin is so much fun. It comes right to your door. <coughs> and I've lost the shoe. There it is. You subscribe by the 10th of the month, and around the 21st of the month, you will get the new box. Now, this is the box that is going to be coming in the, Sept in the October uh, feeling stressed about getting your holiday crafting done with paper pumpkin? There's no need. We deliver everything you need to your door so you have a stress-free holiday season. We have a little bit of everything for your holiday projects from spooky treat packaging to coordinating holiday cards and gift tags. Breeze through the season with a three-month paper pumpkin subscription. And if you do the three-month paper pumpkin subscription before the end of the month, that will qualify you for a free item from the celebrations catalog. And they've added some new items to that. So go to the website and look under um, sale items and then click celebration and you'll see new items that they've added. The boxes are adorable. I just love these. They Sometimes they're the plain orange boxes through the year, but 
when we have seasonal things coming up, this is probably going to be our Halloween. And all you have, I'll leave my subscription code in the bottom. I am still a demonstrator until the end of September. So I will leave that down in the bottom in the description box below. Go to my paper pumpkin and sign up and you will, and I'll leave the link for the the uh, celebration catalog items as well down there so you can go check those out. And the link to the blog post for today so that you can get the exact dimensions and measurements that you need to make these adorable cards. Keep in mind, you don't have to do these colors. You can use anything you want. You could turn these into Halloween cards and use purple and lime green in a witch hat or um, Happy Halloween or Spooky or use them for Christmas and say, you know, Merry Christmas or, you know, Peace and do a snow type background. Maybe we'll do that. I'll hang on to this and we will do a Hall we will do a Halloween card and then we will do a Christmas card with this one. Also, one more thing. Speaking of Christmas, um, Brian Dickey from B&D Crafts and More here on YouTube. He is also a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and we are going to be doing a Christmas 12 weeks of Christmas collab beginning October 5th where you post a video every Sunday between October 5th and Christmas Sunday and so you'll have 12 weeks of new ideas for Christmas whether it's home decor or card making or scrapbooking layout whatever and we are looking for participants to join our hop Brian and I are going to work this week to fine-tune the details so if you're interested please leave a comment in the description or leave a comment down below um, and I will get back with you as soon as I have the details, but we'd love the more the merrier We'd love to have lots of blog lots of YouTube's Channels for people to visit on their Sunday afternoons So I hope you'll come and join us for our 12 weeks of Christmas YouTube hop Remember to like share and subscribe Creative blessings